It's been a long time since I've gotten to wear this flannel so frequently, and it definitely is really comfortable, and I've forgotten how comfortable it is. Especially when making content. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. In this video, we're going to be doing another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. This time, another World Chalice-related video. This time, I'm going to be explaining to you and sort of like letting you guys know that those of you who don't know, uh, if you've been missing my streams and stuff, you would have definitely not seen me play this package before on the channel until now. Uh, and that is the Gen X Undyne package. Explaining to you what you do with it, how you utilize it, what the benefits of it are, what the uh, pros and cons of it are, as well as showing you two different combos. I'm going to show you one that's a TCG territory combo with Summon Sorceress, which is a Gumblar for four combo that Undyne enables just as much as like Venus does, which makes it you know super valuable for the deck, as well as showing you a combo you could do in other territories like you know the latin american areas or eu where summon sorcerers isn't legal but still showing you what you can utilize with uh, genetic sundine in this deck essentially but before that i'd like to take some time to shout out my twitch and my discord server link to both of them in the description if you don't know i stream on a semi-regular basis usually two to three times a week and if you're interested go to that twitch channel link hit the follow notification so you get notified next time I stream, as well as if you want to chat on like a daily basis with me and a bunch of other people that love talking about this game, as well as getting notifications for when I'm going live as well through Discord, you can go to my Discord link in the description down below. But basically, why would you play Gen X Undyne? It doesn't seem like a card that would fit into World Chalice, and it's definitely something that no one was really talking about or messing around with until I brought up Gen X Undyne to the World Chalice Discord server right around the Nationals weekend. It was either like the weekend of or the weekend before, um, I did a lot of testing with Gen X Undyne. It was weird. It was that weird time frame where I had quit Yu-Gi-Oh! and I would sold out my collection, but because I had quit the game and wasn't taking anything seriously, I was like, whenever I would play with my friends just to like, uh, just to mess around on Dueling Book, I would test everything. And so Gen X Undyne was a tech for this deck that I sort of discovered around that time, and I started testing a lot of and realized it had a lot of combo potential in it in terms of being an additional starter for the deck. Now, World Chalice is a deck that is plagued with inconsistencies in terms of quality starter cards. Venus is pretty much the best card in the deck, and World Legacy World Chalice is like the second best card in the deck, but it's not a starter card. It cannot do anything on its own. It is purely like an extender type card, or another combo piece, if you will. So playing more starters that are at least of good quality is what you want to be doing with the deck. Now this was a lot easier for us to do when we had things like Gofu and multiples because that's, you know, one monster that's worth three materials, doesn't require a normal summon, so you can go for World Legacy World Chalice, do a bunch of other, you know, shenanigans and stuff like that, and end up with some good cohesive play structure. But without something like Gofu in the game, we're basically really heavily relying on Venus and Brilliant Fusion. It's the only, t like, true starter cards in the deck. Like, there's not really much else in the deck that is a starter card than Brilliant Fusion or Venus. Like, Transmodify is only, like, a pseudo starter, it's more of an extender, if you draw it in conjunction with another card. And usually those cards have to be, like, Brilliant Fusion, which is your starter anyway, or it has to be Lee, or something like that. Basically, the deck had a problem where it had a lot of reliant on, reliance on Venus and Brilliant Fusion and needed more starters. And that starter needed to be something that was worth multiple monsters that was also vanillas. Now, you could go down the route of Rescue Rabbit, but getting two monsters and having to play a higher vanilla count of things that you probably are going to be playing like World Chalice names for, because you don't really want to be summoning the Shine Balls from your deck in order to preserve like Venus plays for later in the turn, wasn't really that ideal. What you really wanted was something that had a lot more reach and a lot more you know, utility that you could do with it rather than just playing something that just hard loses to Ash Blossom and still takes up your normal summon and doesn't really give you that much out of it because it's only two monsters. There were a lot of things that you could experiment with, like Hornet Drones, because that's Kagari into drones playing two monsters, but none of them are normal monsters, so they don't make Imduk. Uh, so, like, there was a lot of different things that needed to be uh, messed around with, and Undyne just sort of fills all those roles. What you do with Undyne is you normal Undyne, you send Christian Rosenix from your deck to the grave, add Genex Controller to your hand, you banish the Rosenix, specialing a token, you use the token to make Link Spider, and then you special the controller out of your hand off of Link Spider. So it's a self-contained card that summons three monsters on the field instead of four with Venus, but those three monsters, of those monsters, one of them is still a normal monster that makes Emduk, which allows you to continue play structure with Lee, World Legacy, World Chalice, a bunch of different stuff. And with Summon Sorceress in the game, there's combos with it using Undyne as well, which I will get into later, but all that sort of jazz. Like, basically the deck needed more starter cards, and this is a card that fulfills that role pretty much the best out of any other option. It does introduce a couple more bricks into the deck, but Gen X Controller is arguably not a brick. 
because it is a normal monster. You can normal summon it and make Link Spider or M Duck with and then continue play structure. The only real brick card in the deck is Christron Rosenix. If you have a hand that's not capable of doing anything with it, but you can always discard it with Nightmares, discard it for Lee's add back effect is always nice and juicy. There's a lot of different things that can go on there in terms of what you're capable of doing with the Rosenix to get it out of your hand. The only time you're bricking on this engine is less than 6% of the time. If you're playing three Undyne, one Rosenix, and one controller, you have about like a 5.5% chance of drawing one of either the Rosenix or the controller and an Undyne in your hand. So it's an incredibly low threshold for bricking in terms of what you're capable of doing with the deck. And then obviously like it depends on the rest of your hand as well of what you can do. Uh, with certain things. So that's really the simple explanation for why you'd want to consider playing Undyne in your deck. It's not really a card that has too many cons associated with it in terms of bricking and all that sort of stuff, but it's definitely got a lot of moldability even with those bricks in terms of how you could approach plays with them. But so what I'm going to show you is, first I'm going to show you a TCG Liquid combo involving Summon Sorceress that is Undyne plus World Legacy World Chalice. This is a Gumblar for four, the chance of having a Herald of Orange Light in your hand, a World Legacy World Chalice on the field to potentially, you know, make it hard for your opponent to access the extra deck, and then you have, uh, you've drawn two cards off Ningirsu, off of just these two cards, and the World Legacy World Chalice is interchangeable with Lee, Brilliant Fusion, Foolish Burial, any sort of additional combo extender that you want to, you know, provide into it, as well as other monsters in your hand obviously just make the combo better by being extenders to special summon off Firewall. So this is the TCG combo I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the European option that you could uh, have for like European territories, Latin American territories, other territories that don't have summon sorcerers but are TCG territories. I'm going to show you that combo later. That one's a lot more simple than this one. So we're going to jump straight in. So what you're going to do is you're going to normal summon Gen X Undyne. You're going to use its effect and you're going to send Crystron Rosenix from your deck to the grave and add the Gen X controller to your hand. Obvious starting play. Then you're going to banish the Crystron Rosenix to get a token and you're going to remove the token from the field because it is a normal monster but not a actual normal monster for Imduk. You're going to make this into Link Spider. And then Link Spider, the Spooder, is going to special summon the Gen X controller from your hand under it. So now you've already facilitated three monsters on the field. One of them is a normal monster, can make Imduk, all that sort of stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to make Imduk with the controller. And what this allows is that if you have Lee in your hand, you're just going to get rid of the Undyne and the Imduk into Reproductus. Reproductus could uh, special, or the Imduk can special leave from your hand. You can go into Summon Sorcerer's plays. There's a lot of different routes you can do. You can make Goblin. Uh, the Imduk will tri uh, trigger specialing leave from your hand. You can discard a card for Goblin to gain the additional normal summon there. Lee will search World Legacy World Chalice. You can then tribute for World Legacy World Chalice. There's a lot of different ways you can approach this. You'll see that later. But for this combo sequence with World Legacy World Chalice in hand, you are going to tribute the Undyne. You're a normal summon World Legacy World Chalice in one of the zones under the extra monster zone. It doesn't matter which side it is, it's just important it's one of these zones. So then from there, you're going to link away the Imduk and the Link Spider into Reproductus. Uh, this is a dino that whatever it points to, you can change its attribute or type. So what you're going to use it for is you're going to use its effect to change World Legacy World Chalice into a dinosaur type to match Reproductus, which you're going to do. So you use Reproductus, change this to a dinosaur, and then you link away with the World Legacy World Chalice and the Reproductus into your summon sorceress. And so then from there your World Legacy World Chalice is going to trigger and you're going to special summon Lee the World Chalice Fairy from your deck and then you're going to special summon uh, World Chalice Guard Dragon from your deck. And you're going to special summon Guard Dragon just off somewhere where it doesn't matter and your Lee effect is going to trigger searching chosen by the World Chalice to your hand or whatever vanilla you're playing. It doesn't have to be specifically chosen. Chosen's like one of the better ones because you know you can e it and stuff so if you're playing that then you can have that one but I uh, bleh. Uh, but so anyway, your summon sorceress is pointing at Lee now, but you don't have that many fairies in grave because you haven't done a Venus play. Uh, this transmodify could obviously be a Venus play from here, but we're ignoring that. So what you're going to do is you're still going to summon Eva from your deck because that's an important, you know, tool for resource gathering, but you're going to go about the play in a different way. So what you're going to do is you're going to link away the Lee and the World Chalice Guard Dragon here into Eve the World Chalice Priestess in whatever your center monster zone is, and then you're going to link away the Eva into Link Karibo just to get that into the graveyard circulation for the Gumblar play. And the Eva now is going to trigger banishing only the Lee, because it's the only fairy in your grave, and you're going to add another Lee to your hand. Now, it's notable that if you open Undyne plus a Shine Ball, you can hold the controller in your hand for later, special Shine Ball off Link Spider, and then you get to Eva for Shine Ball and Lee to get Harold and Lee to your hand. So definitely moldable to, you know, mess around with. It's definitely a very, very flexible starter card. It's not something that's really, you know, rigid in terms of what you can do with it. But so from here, you're going to link the Summon Sorceress and the Link Kribo away 
into Firewall Dragon, our good friend. Everybody loves him. Nobody, nobody has any sort of qualms with Firewall Dragon whatsoever. Uh, and then you're going to banish the Guard Dragon and special summon the Vanilla, the controller, that is guaranteed to be in your circulation because it's an Undyne card off the Guard Dragon, and you're a special next to the Firewall. So then from here, you're going to link away with the controller. You're going to link away into Imduk, the World Chalice Dragon, trigger Firewall's effect, special summon from your hand, and you're going to special summon the Lee next to Firewall. And from here, you're going to link away with the Lee and the Imduk, and you're going to link those into Nightmare Goblin. Now, from here, you can either trigger Firewall Dragon's effect to special summon from hand, or you can just trigger the Imduk's effect. Um, it's a little bit more blanket uh, of, like, you know, if anything happens to just mess with the Firewall, but you could just use Imduk. Um, but the Firewall technically does trigger first, so you kind of want to use that one. Uh, you can't really activate Firewall's effect to add back before Imduk triggers because they both meet their triggers here and you would choose to use them and then uh, chain link to the effect. But actually, yeah, you, you would just do that. You'd go chain link one Imduk effect and then chain link two Firewall to add back. So I'm starting to confuse myself. I've been noticing I've been doing that a lot recently. Well, let's carry on. <laughs> but so regardless of which one you choose, whether it's Firewall's effect is special or Imduk's effect is special from your hand, you're going to chain Firewall Dragon's effect to it to add back two cards. You're going to add back the Eva to your hand always and World Legacy World Chalice to your hand in this instance because that's something you want to try and leave on the board. It's not really too strong of an option to leave on the board, but it is something that does you know somewhat matter. It makes your opponent use their battle phase before they go into the extra deck off the two cards they have left for this play. But so now your uh, your effective special summon is going to resolve, which is going to special summon this known chosen from your hand, and then you're going to link it to grave for your third Imduk, and then you're going to link away Imduk and the Nightmare Goblin into Ningirsu. And this Ningirsu is going to be chain link one, Imduk is going to be chain link two, to special summon the World, uh, World Legacy World Chalice from your hand, and then you're going to just simply draw two cards. So it doesn't matter what these cards are that you draw, obviously if they're monsters, then they can be used as extenders, all that sort of stuff, because Firewall Dragon's kind of busted, uh, all these different sort of things. But assuming none of these cards matter, what you can do is that from here you go lengthen in Gearsu as a link 3 and link the Eve away using it as one material into Topologic Gumblar Dragon. And so then from here, your Firewall Dragon is going to trigger special summoning a monster from your hand. And so you're going to special summon the Eva next to Firewall or Gumblar. Gumblar will trigger. Discarding two cards from your hand it does not matter what they are um, Like it, it just it doesn't really matter uh, Necessarily and then during your opponent's draw phase. You're obviously going to do the regular link Karibo play uh, To just special summon link Karibo back uh, if you have any fairies in grave uh, other than the Lee Then you're able to trigger those and do some stuff with them uh, But mainly you're going to be searching with uh, Eva on the Lee for at least one card and that still puts you at four cards in hand, and you're discarding two more with Gumblar at the bare minimum. And then your opponent's discarding two more cards. They've discarded four off Gumblar. And this isn't super good of a card to have on the field, because it's not that amazing in this situation, but at least it does make them have to be in an awkward situation. If they just don't read the card, which I have had happen multiple times, both online, on you know try-hard testing, and in person with people, they just see all this text, and they're like, I'm not really too uh too comfortable with under my understanding of this card and they just get it wrong of like what its effect is so like there's things like that that come into play i don't know sort of we're sort of making some weird arguments here but this is undyne plus world legacy world chalice um like what it allows you to do like it's basically literally just worse than the venus combo by one card because undyne only summons three cards and venus summons four onto your field when all said and done so that one card being missing is the one draw of Ningirsu that you didn't get. So there's a lot of different things that, you know, affect it. But next combo I'm going to show you right up, right now. All right, so you're in the European territories or the Latin American territories. Whatever territory just does not allow Summon Sorceress legal for play for some reason that Viz Media just doesn't want to ship a card overseas or to other continents. Don't quite understand that one, but hey, we'll run with it. Should you still be playing Gen X Undyne in your deck in those territories where Summon Sorceress is not available to you? Yes. Because this card is a very quality starter, we've already established it counts as three monsters. One of them is an Imduk, which is very good for your play uh, melding with the rest of your deck. Um, and it's basically just a card that facilitates a bunch of Ningirsu who draw three plays into Saryuja plays. Undyne plus World Legacy World Chalice, Lee, Brilliant Fusion, Foolish, discarding a monster to get Lee back. All of those plays yield you Ningirsu who draw three plays in different ways that also lead you into Saryuja plays if you so need them to do so. 
And so obviously the Lee one is the worst one because it's Undyne plus Lee, but then you have to discard a card for Nightmare Goblin to proc its additional normal summon effect. Uh, so you can use Lee that special summoned off M Duck, add World Legacy World Chalice, and then tribute summon for that. But the Brilliant Fusion combo obviously deals with that. If you open Shade Brigandine, that one card you discard just becomes Shade Brigandine into another M Duck, so that really doesn't matter. There's a bunch of different ways to mold it. It's very flexible in terms of a starter. It's not a very hard, hard coded starter in terms of what you're capable of doing with it, and that's what I really like about it. So what you're going to do is you're going to normal summon the Undyne, and you are going to send the Crystron Rosenix, if I can find it. There it is. Rosenix to Grave to add Gen X Controller to your hand. And then Rosenix here is going to banish itself, and you're going to special summon a token, and then you're going to remove that token to special Link Spooter from your extra deck, which is going to special summon the controller from your hand right underneath it. And that's going to become an Imduck. And so in this combo, I'm showing you World Legacy World Chalice because it is one of the easier routes to take. It requires, like, less messing around. But so from here... You're going to tribute the Undyne for the additional normal summon Imduk gives you into World Legacy World Chalice. You keep Imduk on the field. If you have another World Chalice name in your hand, you can obviously chain block. Really good, really premium. And then you're going to link these away under the Link Spider into a Nightmare Goblin. So all of your plays naturally progress into Nightmare Goblin with this sort of route anyway without Summon Sorceress. Uh, so, like, it doesn't really matter that it's taking up spots in your extract because it's basically just like proxy dragon arrows. <laughs> anyway. But so you're going to trigger your World Legacy World Chalice Grave effect, and you're going to special summon Lee, the World Chalice Fairy, from your deck, and then you're going to special summon Chosen by the World Chalice from your deck in this instance. Uh, this is just a vanilla, the, the vanilla that I play. The chosen vanilla, as it were. Then Lee's effect is going to trigger adding the Guard Dragon from your deck to your hand. So, now from here, what you're going to do is you're going to link the Lee and the Link Spider into the open zones that Nightmare Goblin gives you into Ebe the World Chalice Priestess. And then from here, you're going to link the Chosen by the World Chalice away into Imduk in the zone that the Link Spider just vacated. And so now from here, you've got the Lee in your grave. You're going to discard the Guard Dragon as cost to add the Lee back to your hand. And then you're going to banish Guard Dragon to special summon either the Controller or the Chosen by the World Chalice. And then you're going to link that away into yet another Imduk. So, Imduk's for everyone. So you're going to summon Imduk, and then you're going to link away the Imduk and the Goblin into Ningirsu. Very simple. Uh, pretty much basically the old way the deck used to play. Ningirsu's effect chain link 1, Imduk's effect chain link 2. Special to them in the, uh, the Lee right here, and then you're going to draw three cards off of this Ningirsu. And now, at this point, you have, uh, you've used both your normal summons that are available to you, uh, but what you do have is you have the ability to draw into things like Transmodify, or you could draw into Venus uh, and make Saryuja with these in special. You've used no Shine Balls theoretically in these combo sequences. So here, you're always going to end up on Venus uh, like material here with the Transmodify because you're always going to be adding Lee back and special summoning it here. Uh, unless you're doing one of the Brilliant Fusion routes. So there's there's little things that tweak around. But so from here, if you have Transmodify in your hand, if you drew it off these three cards, you could Transmodify Lee away into Venus, go into there. But even with what you have on the field right now, you could just commit it all to a Saryuja. If you draw into Waterfront, if you have a different thing that you want to do, just turbo into more cards. If you have, like, Soul Charge that you drew, and you want to just, you know, draw cards and meld your hand further, there's a lot of different things and routes that you have available to you. In this instance, with the hand that I have right now, I could activate Brilliant Fusion, send Eva to Grave, do some stuff with that potentially. There's a lot of different things that you have access to because a lot of your deck, in terms of the Venuses and the Brilliant Fusion engine and stuff like that, have been relatively untouched through these combo sequences, depending on what you know, your deck is built like. But anyway, that's basically the gist of some of the combos you can do with Undyne, some of the ways to approach doing things with Undyne, and what they allow you to do. It's a quality starter, very good for the deck. I highly recommend you play it, or at least test it, see if it works for you or not. I've been playing it on a lot of my streams. It's been working out great. It's one of those things that you can obviously just you know approach it from a different angle every time. You could make Undyne plus World Legacy World Chalice. You could just turtle up straight into Saryuja and skip the Ningirsu phase. You could do a lot of different sorts of things with what you have access to off of uh, off of that stuff. So take this knowledge and use it how you will. But other than that, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, leave a positive comment, leave a like or something. Subscribe if you're new here and haven't you know subscribed already and you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh content that I, at least I think is informative. I may be wrong. But anyway, if you're new here, want to see more videos, consider touching that subscribe button and seeing more in the future, potentially. But other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, guys, 
take care. I'll see you in the next stream or video whenever I catch you.